Hi, this is Brian. I'm here to show you some of the tools in StatCrunch for doing uh, inference on two samples. So we're going to start with looking at um, uh, a difference of two population proportions. Uh, okay, so this problem. We want to conduct the following test at an alpha equals 0.10 level of significance. We want, so we're given some sample data um, from two samples of sizes 255 and 301. Uh, we've got how many, 30 people out of the first sample, 36 out of the second, said yes to some arbitrary question. So the null hypothesis would be that the two population proportions are the same versus the alternative that the two population proportions are different. Okay, so that's straight, straightforward. Now I wanna show you how in StatCrunch we can calculate the, um, uh, run the hypothesis test. So under stat, under the populate proportion stats to sample with summary, we just enter from the first sample, we have 30 out of 255. And from the second sample, we have 36 out of 301. And um, now the hypothesis test, notice the difference uh, of the way it's shown, P1 minus P2 equals zero is the same as P1 equals P2. So uh, that's what we pick. And, and the alternative we pick not equal to, that's what we want. And just click compute and that'll do the hypothesis test. We're going to get a, a P value as well as a, a test statistic. So it's first asking for the test statistic. That's negative 0 0.07. Let's bring it over here. Critical values, oh, okay, well, let's find critical values. From, uh, from the, that's from the Z, uh, the normal uh, probability calculator. Uh, at an alpha of 0.10, we want to go to the between calculator. Uh, if the alpha level 0.10 means there's 90% between the two cutoffs, so that we put 0.90 in, click compute and it's going to give us the cutoffs for a standard normal distribution. So three decimal places is 1.645. I'm going to round it to 1.645. Okay, well, the test statistic is between the cutoffs, so we do not reject the null. That's the conclusion we make using the classical approach. All right, well, let's see what a confidence interval would, would be. So I'm going to close that and open up. Uh, to find the confidence interval for a difference of two proportions, it's again going to be under proportion stats to sample with summary. But um, this time I'm going to click confidence interval for P1 minus P2. I'll set the confidence level at 0.90. And let's enter these this data. So we are told 397 successes. 537, uh, that's the first sample size, and then 443 and 563. That's everything we need to input. We just click compute and we've got it. So we've got a lower limit and an upper limit for our confidence interval. Well, let's just type that in. So it's negative 0 0.08, let's see, three decimal places, eight, nine, that, that go, rounds up to negative 0 0.09 and 0 0.005. Oh, it's negative. Don't want to make that mistake. Cool. All right, so if we were con con going to interpret this, we would say, well, we can say with 90% confidence that the intervals from negative 0 0.09 to negative 0 0.005. So we can, so that means that we can say with 90% confidence that P1 is less than P2. Uh, if, if the confidence interval straddled zero, we couldn't say that with 90% confidence. We couldn't rule out the possibility of the two proportions being equal or even P1 being greater than P2. All right, great, we have some data now. A researcher randomly selects six fathers who have adult sons and record the father's and son's height to obtain the data below. 
Determine if the sons are taller than their fathers at an alpha 0.1 level of significance. So we're assuming normality assumptions are satisfied. So let's just open this data in StatCrunch. I'm going to close this down. Okay. So we're going to use father's height minus son's height. Um, <clears throat> we want to see whether sons are taller than their fathers. So here's our data. We're doing, we're gonna be, since we have fathers and sons, we're going to pair them together. So under stat, we're going to do a T stat, not two sample, but paired. And here I'm going to, my first column is the height of fathers, second sample is height of sons, and I'm going to, let's click save differences just for fun. It'll create a new column of differences. It's not strictly necessary. Now the null hypothesis is that the, the two, the, the difference of means is zero, but the alternative is that the difference of means is what? We wanna see if the sons are taller than their fathers. That means sons, father's height minus son's height should be negative, less than zero. If the son's mean is bigger than father's mean, mu1 minus mu2 should be negative. So that's the alternative we wanna pick. Now I wanna click compute, and I wanna show you one thing that just popped up. This new column of differences was created. So really what was done was a one sample t-test on the differences column. That's all a paired sample test is. You just calculate the differences and you do a one sample test on the differences, but this allows us to do it all in one fell swoop. Anyway, we've got um, a p-value of 0 0.1075. That's just over my, um, my alpha level of 0.1. Uh, if we were to go to the stat, the calculator for the t distribution and for a left tail test, um, with 0.10 in the tail and uh, degrees of freedom of, what did we have here? It says degrees of freedom is five, so I'll put in five for the degrees of freedom. And I'm gonna click compute. This is telling me that the, sorry, the cutoff, the critical value is negative 1.475. So I would only reject if the T statistic was less than that cutoff out in the rejection region, but it's not. So I do not reject because T naught is greater than T alpha. T naught is my test statistic, T alpha is my cutoff, my critical value. Okay, we could have of course concluded that based on the p-value of 0 0.1075 being greater than my alpha level 0.1. Same thing, same conclusion, just a different way of looking at it. All right, we've got some summary data from uh, some survey, okay. Um, we wanna test whether mu1 e not, does not equal mu2. Okay, so the, the null hypothesis is always that the, at least for this course, that the two have the same mean, mu1 equals mu2, and the alternative is given to us, test whether mu1, e the thing we're testing is what we put in the alternative, so that's that. Okay, now let's go to StatCrunch and clear this out and do a new hypothesis test. Go to tstats, two sample with summary data. I've got sample mean for population one, 17.8, uh, standard deviation 5.3, sample size of 17. Sample mean for the second is 21.9, 4.7 standard deviation, and again 17. I do not want to pool variances. Only pool variances if you can if you want to assume that variance of the two populations is the same, but we don't want to assume that. The null hypothesis is that the two the mu1 minus mu2 equals zero. That's remember equivalent to mu1 equals mu2. And so we pick not equal to for our, for our alternative and click compute and we can see what we get. So let's move this over a bit. The p value it's right here, three decimal places. I'll just copy it over, 0 0.023. That's pretty low. It's, it's lower than 0 0.05, so we would reject the null hypothesis. There is sufficient evidence to conclude the two populations have different means. 
Cool. And a 95% confidence interval. Well, we can just go back to here, edit, uh, and change it from a hypothesis test to a confidence interval, and click compute, and we get it there. So negative, let's see, two decimal places, negative 7.60 up to negative, I'll just type it in, negative 5.9, let's round it up to negative 0.6. Great. All right, a researcher wanted to determine if the carpeted rooms contain more bacteria than uncarpeted rooms. The table shows results for both, the, the number of bacteria per cubic foot for both types of rooms, okay. So let's open this data set in StatCrunch. We'll be using that in just a bit. Uh, first, let's answer some questions. We want to determine whether carpeted rooms have more bacteria, okay, at, at an alpha of 0.05. We're going to assume normality assumptions are all met, so we're going to, let's continue with this, pro okay. So state the null and alternative. The null would be that the two populations have the same mean, but the alternative is that carpeted have more, so that's what we're going to choose. C, mu1 is greater than mu2 that the mean for carpeted rooms is greater than the mean for uncarpeted rooms. All right, now let's go to StatCrunch and let's calculate this. So from the T-stat uh, for two sample, I want to choose with data because I've got data in my columns. Column one is my carpeted, that's sample one, and then choose uncarpeted for sample two. Again, do not pull variances. I'm not assuming that they have the same variance. And I, my null hypothesis, mu1 minus mu2 equals zero. The alternative, mu1 minus mu2, match it up. It's greater than zero. The same sign, the same inequality sign. Compute and see what we get. P-value is well, pretty high, 0.365. I would, it's certainly higher than a, my alpha level. A high p-value leads you to not reject the null hypothesis. So we do not reject the null. There is not sufficient evidence at the alpha of 0 0.05 to conclude that carpeted rooms have more bacteria. That's it. All right, so what do we have? Two researchers conduct a study in two groups of students they were asked to, whether, to answer 42 trivia questions from a board game. The students in group one were asked to spend five minutes thinking about what it would mean to be a professor, while the students in group two were asked to think about soccer hooligans. Though these pre-test thoughts are a form of priming. Um, and this is an actual study that was done, and these results are similar to the results from the actual study, that priming with thoughts of being smart actually helps you to be smarter. Uh, that's very surprising, but apparently true. So the 200 students, so now we have this, the, the data. So let's, um, we're asked to, to find a confidence interval for the difference in scores. So I'm gonna go to StatCrunch. Um, under the T-Stats 2 sample with summary, I'm going to put in the necessary pieces to create confidence interval. For the first sample, we've got a mean of 22.4 and a standard deviation of 4.3 out of 200 sample size. Second population, or second sample, this is hooligan thinkers, 17.9, 2.8 for the standard deviation, and again, a sample size of 200. I'm not gonna pull variances, and I'm not gonna choose a hypothesis test, I'm gonna do confidence interval. I'm asked to do 95% confidence level, so that's what I'm going to choose, 0.95. Click Compute and see what I get. Let's move it over. We've got from 3.786 to 5.213. I'm rounding that up to 214 to get three decimal places. Hit Enter. Uh, so we would say that we can be 95% confident the difference of means is in the interval. That's how we interpret a confidence interval. 
since we're doing an estimate on the difference of means, that's what we're confident about. Now, what does it say about priming? Since the difference is, we're 95% confident that the difference is between 3.7 and 5.21, that's another way of saying we're 95% confident that mu1 is greater than mu2. And if mu1 is greater than mu2, that suggests that priming works. Since the 95% confidence, confidence interval does not contain zero, it actually suggests priming does have an effect on the scores. If the interval in contained zero, we couldn't rule out the possibility that this was just from random, you know, random chance from the sampling, but um, the confidence interval is only in the positive side, so we were 95% confident that priming actually works. All right, so that was it. Uh, confidence intervals and hypothesis testing for two samples for proportions and means. I hope this helped, and I wish you the best of luck in your studies and your learning. Go be a genius.